I am Angela Marie Hutchinson, a social media professor at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, California. I have been tasked to share with you an informative message to make sure that you're practicing safe social. Yes, that's right, I said practicing safe social. Usually when we hear that phrase, we're referring to something else. Today, I'd like to talk to you about making sure that you have a better online social media experience as we are experiencing a very difficult and unprecedented time in our world. So I'd like to offer you three tips on how to make sure that you have a positive experience as you interact with our digital ecosystem. The first tip is to identify how much time you want to spend on social media and then allocate it appropriately throughout the day based on the various platforms that you're going to be using. If you wake up in the morning and you get on social media and you stay on social media throughout the day checking it every other every you know five minutes or so and you're spending so much time on there throughout the entire day you can end up spending over six hours or more on social media which is not necessarily going to be a very healthy experience for you. So I want you to determine how much time you have to spend on social media and then allocate that time appropriately throughout the day. But the second tip I have for you is you want to identify which platforms allow you to feel the most positive. What I mean is which platforms allow you to have the most positive experience. So while you're on those platforms, you feel like you're being entertained, educated, inspired, informed, whatever it might be. And you want to stay away from the platforms that make you feel depressed or unhappy or sad or questioning things about yourself um, that put you in a very negative headspace. You want to remove yourself from those platforms or at least spend less time on there. Focus on spending your time on the platforms that, have, that provide for you a positive online social media experience. The third tip I have for you is to track your productivity. During this time, it's so important for you to track your productivity because most of us are supposed to be doing working from home while many of us are actually spending far too much time on social media. So you want to track your productivity because you want to make sure that you're not being over consumed by all of the content that is available, that is accessible to you. Now we have some natural instincts in our brain that will allow us to not get too overloaded, but sometimes those instincts don't always kick in or we can override those instincts based on our emotions or our feelings. So you want to make sure you track your productivity. Well, if it's a schedule that works for you, great, do it. If it's a to-do list that works for you, great, do it. For me, schedules don't always work and to-do lists don't always work. So what I like to use is called a did it list. Yes, a did it list. So I start off my morning with a blank slate. I either use a notepad or I have a memo on my phone and I just look at it and it's just blank and nothing goes on it until I get it done. So when I do it, it gets goes onto the did it list and that way I can track my productivity and I can see what I'm getting done and what's not getting done. Because what happens sometimes with to-do lists is you feel productive just by looking at the list. The list itself just feels like productive. It feels like you're gonna have a productive day so you feel good about your day, which can work for some people. What used to happen with me is I would feel productive and then I wouldn't actually do the things on the to-do list. So I hope this information was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm active, of course, on social media, on Twitter and Instagram as Live with Angela. I'm also active on LinkedIn and Facebook.